Todd, also known as I Know Leopard. Welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you. Uh, Luke and Todd, when you guys left Adelaide and went to Sydney to form the band, did you have a, a sonic vision for the band? Did you have a definite sound in mind? Um, not at that stage. When we um, moved to Sydney um, from Adelaide, we were kind of still messing around with uh, different projects. We hadn't really got there. It was after a, a couple of years in Sydney is when we uh, we kind of changed things up and decided to create a new project, which would become I Know Leopard. And um, it took us like a, a couple of years from there to kind of craft it and, and figure out really what we wanted to do sonically. So, yeah, we didn't know straight away. It was kind of more of a, you know, um, you know just tr by trial and error, figuring out what kind of got us excited. <laughs> yeah. You worked with the same producers for the two EPs. Um, what sort of things did you learn from the, the first EP that you took into the second one? Hmm. What did you learn? Um, I don't know. We kind of made the second one a bit quicker, actually. So we probably learned something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. We, mm. we had like, we set a bit few limits on, on the second one in terms of like deadlines and dates and stuff like that, which was mm. different to the first. I think um, in the second one, we the, the second one is a little bit more 3D, I'd say, than the first one. It's like it's a little bit more, I suppose, I dare say, pop sounding um, and just kind of warmer um, sounds, uh, crisper, I would say. What, what about Hacks and Craig, the producers? Did they take a, a different approach or was it? Yeah, well, I think the first EP we did solely with Craig Wilson um, and the second EP, we, that's when... Um, and Hacks started to, we started to work with Hacks. So it probably was a lot of, you know, um, Hacks' influence as well, because he's got very kind of a much more modern style of production. But we also love what Craig does as well, because he just records, you know, drum. he just records drums beautifully as well as strings and things like that. So we just kind of combine the two and, and yeah, that's um, you know, another life is what happened with the yeah. result. Hits me like it's a memory. tools that you use? Or just do songs come, sometimes kind of come out of a synth sound or beats or? Yeah, well I mean you say synth sound, there's a song that I knew um, uh, on an EP called Spaceships which just came solely from just a synth sound and it was just a just, the song just worked developed around that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean it comes from everywhere. It comes from either us jamming, um, from you know somebody starting off with something at home and then taking it to the rest of the group and then develop, develop, developing it from there. There's not really one way that it happens for us. Um, you know, we like to change it up a bit in terms of yeah, yeah. songwriting. Uh, let's talk about the stuff that you do use on stage and in the in the studio. Jenny, you've uh, you've got a, a violin. Is mm -hmm. that got a pickup in it or? Uh, it's a pickup wrapped around it, so it's not in the violin, it's just one I attach and take off after I use it. Yeah. And I use some pedals as well, some effects. What are the effects you use with it? Uh, some delay and like octave pedals. Okay. Yeah. And you also play keys? I play keys as well, yeah. Yeah, what, what are the keyboards that are on stage? Well, you've got... Is it? it's, a, it's a Nord. It's a Nord, that's right. Um, that's a kind of Nord Electro. I play the Nord. Yeah. It's his Nord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting because originally when Jenny um, yeah. came on board, um, I was playing kind of all, all the keys and singing, and that's when Jenny came in because I was like, oh, it'd be, it'd be great to have somebody to, to play a bit more of the keys so that I can just sing, be more of a front man. Yeah. Um, and then Jenny came on board, not only could she play keys beautifully, but she's got this incredible talent for violin, which is kind of tra classically trained in, and everything. So she started playing that in jams, and it was just perfect. It was just like the, 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 just the element of the sound that we needed, you know. And um, so yeah, that's now. So it's pretty much most songs you play violin for these yeah. days. Yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. um, Rosie, you, you've got a Fender bass. It's not a Fender. Is it? It isn't. It's, it's a, a Nash. Okay. Nash bass. So yeah, it's it's pretty much a Fender P bass. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, like a custom shop. So. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so how long have you had that? Where'd you pick that up? I've actually just got it recently. I've had it for this year. Got it at the beginning of the year. Um, I got it at a place called Wild Horse Guitars in Sydney, in right. Surrey Hills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a good find. I just picked it up and played it and just fell in love with it and had right. to buy it. Yeah, and what are yeah. you playing through? Um, I, use, I mainly use my Sans amp and then whatever amp the venue provides. Okay. Yeah. 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 
and Todd, is, is your friend of the real deal? Or? It's a real deal, yeah. It's kind of rare too, actually. Yeah. yeah. It's like a thin line telly. Um, it's a US one. It's like from the 90s, but it sounds really nice. And um, it's got kind of a pretty unique look to it. Like to get a thin line with like the white binding on the edge and that kind of pick up shape, is, I've never seen one. So I got lucky with it. Yeah, and are you big on effects? Um, I do use a bunch of effects, but I also kind of like to keep my sound like pretty, uh, well, the, the amount of effects and pedals I use as minimal as possible. Yeah. Um, and like it's kind of consistent. Like, um, yeah, I've got like a few kind of key sounds, I guess, are mine and I'm comfortable with. And I, you know, I like playing around, especially in the studio, but yeah, I'm not, I don't have a crazy setup, which I like. Yeah, mm. I mean, there's a lot going on in with the keyboards. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. There's a lot of yeah, pretty intricate sounds in general with the band. So, kind of just find my place and sit within that. Yeah. So I saw in one photo you had a pretty funky acoustic bass too. The, yeah. The one that's painted. Yeah. Yeah. It was a gift. Okay. Yeah, from one of like my childhood influences, Les. Yeah, he got me into one of the guys who got me to start playing. Um, him and another man Stuart um, actually like set it up for me made it for me fixed it up and painted it and gave it to me as a gift when I was about nine so yeah it's very nice I don't play it that often yeah it's, yeah more of just um, a nice memory to keep and Luke you've been known to break out a key tar oh, yeah. oh, yes. I think that's probably in the same photo you saw yeah, yeah, yeah I know like, that one <laughs> yeah when we do acoustic sets it's always tough because you know the song just so synth centric so it's kind of like oh I'm going to have to include some kind of electronic keyboard because otherwise I just like <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's I look like an idiot. Um, I don't know if you look like much more of an idiot. Yeah, I'm already going to say a guitar player. But yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, that's just kind of something that I borrowed from my mate. That's really cool. Those things are good, like those kind of real shitty kind of Casio tone toy keyboards um, are great for recording as well because you just put through effects and you know delays and you know compressors and things that sounds nice. If, if money was no issue, what uh, would a... I know leopard show sound and look like uh, you two. <laughs> you two? <laughs> I don't know. I want to get some sick. I want to play synth bass. Yeah, mm -hmm. Rosie wants to play. She wants to be able to have like synth bass and normal bass just set up, so she can just do what she chooses. Um, I don't know. Just some more rises. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some more rises. I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, recently I saw um, Radiohead. I don't know how like that tour they did kind of recently and you know I mean that's the ultimate kind of setup I mean there's kind of all members with kind of all, you know, multiple gadgets and things to play with um, throughout the show in their own kind of stations their own little vibe stations yeah, we all had a vibe station and multiple yeah. things to play station. with yeah, yeah. Our own little pods yeah maybe. and everything just like you know, not, and for nothing to, to break or like you know malfunction throughout the set would be good too so where are you guys at with a full length album have you written much since yeah, was that? written um, bits and pieces. Um, we tend to just write uh, little bits and pieces, just sketches, and then stop it there before we over demo because we found that when we over demo things, um, we lose the original spark of the song, which kind of made us love it in the first place. Um, and then we're forever chasing that original spark and we never get there. So I think. Um, there's always little sketches that we take straight to the, the recording studio and just start. And then, and then a lot of the time with songs, we just write something that we just on the spot. So it could be in the studio and just something comes out of nowhere and we'll just go, that's really cool, let's record it straight away. So the whole spontaneous writing thing is um, uh, it's something we love doing and I think we'll explore that more on the, on the LP. So probably half of it will be like pre-written, the other half could be just spontaneous stuff. Yeah. What is the vision? What's the grand plan? domination um, I don't know I mean we just like first and foremost we just want to make music that we like you know that, that gets, makes us excited and, um, you know it's, it's not really there's not really like a, a grand vision to be like oh we want to be a big famous band or whatever it's just um, we all just are really really passionate about music and, and just the whole process of making it and and, uh, and then touring touring it and <laughs> and having crowds now you're connecting with, with audiences I don't know like there's not really much more that I can um, yeah that I'd really want than just <laughs> just to kind of keep making music and and, um, and yeah yeah just enjoy it and it's just we just really enjoy it <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I don't know. This is probably a way more profound answer. <laughs> but um, really, we just, we just love doing it and we're just going to keep doing it because we love it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, guys. Thanks for your time. Thanks very Thank much. You. Awesome. Thanks for having us.